You know what my the most positive criticism for me was? Stop sniffling after you say a statement. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> it just it just sounds weird because it's. <laughs> Hello everyone, this week's episode of White Spectrum, we will touch upon the subject of criticism for any sort of artistic expression, movies, music, painting, especially we'll touch upon the criticism on movies and how far can you go and how far is too far when it comes to criticism. On a lighter note, in our section called What the Crap Did I Hear, we will look at a micronation that not many of you might have known existed and we'll talk about just the incredible things happening there in the history of that micronation so stay tuned criticism in terms of art you know if somebody actually wants to delve into creating some sort of you know or you know giving uh, getting into an artistic expression maybe music movies tv doesn't matter youtube videos how far can you go with the criticism of that because, you know, it, it, they're real people, too. I mean, they're just trying to make a movie. So first you have to separate, was it supposed to be bad on purpose? Was it supposed to be really campy, cheesy on purpose? Or was it unknowingly bad, but then they kept making movies that were really bad? So how far can you go with that criticism? Well, how would you define criticism? Because... <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> Because like one one of the questions I have is if someone's just expressing their personal opinion and being like I know I have my weird ways of understanding things and this is how I, in my point of view, criticize this thing that I just obtained. Is is that a criticism or is that just an opinion or is can that be the same thing? Because is criticism is trying to be objective, right? Yeah. Yeah, but an opinion subjective. Well, some criticism is factual. I mean, you can point out the things, you know, hey, the sound was bad. That's true. So that's more subjective. That's more that people, so like, actually it, everybody it, realizes that. Well, that's objective, not yeah. subjective. The, okay. Yeah. Technical <laughs> aspects. Oh, yeah. Were, yeah, I guess the technical aspect, you could be like, okay, the sound was bad. You, we could see the boom okay, mic in this that's scene. That's objective, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like... Subjective think, is your own feeling about it. Right? Yeah, what right. you obtained yeah, right. from okay. the movie, like I got this message, like that's that's where I feel like that's completely subjective. So I don't know if is that that's not technically criticism, right? I don't know. I mean, you. I mean, let's let's actually open up a definition of what criticism actually is. Just a right here at our fingertips. The expression of disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. That's the definition or dictionary definition of criticism. Perceived. So, Perceived. so it can be subjective. It can be subjective. Interessante. Okay. So your question is how far can we go? How far can you go? I mean, you know, because it, it, is, it is the idea, like, you know, let's, let's take the... You mean in good taste, right? In good taste, yes. You know, people like Neil Breen who make movies... People actually make, you know, like videos like we made, um, and that's criticism plus comedy on top of that. So we're actually making fun of every single thing that he's done in the movie. So how far can you actually take that? And, and you know, I mean, to be honest, um, you know, this is what my lady was saying that, you know, I mean, he might be monetarily getting, you know, uh, compensation because people now watch his movie and buy his DVDs, but as a, as me, you know, mentally or, you know, personally, how does he feel about that? If he ever found that out? I don't know. I think we, I mean, you'd honestly have to ask him, but, but yeah, I mean, that's the difference between being able to, to take either objective or subjective criticism and, and just going, yep, I'm going to laugh all the way to the bank versus, you know, somebody making fun of, of your, your efforts and you're really trying hard to do it and it just kind of sucks. But I tell you what, from personal experience, when you put a movie, when you put something out there for entertainment purposes, you're playing with the big boys at that point, and you need to be able to, to, to take that criticism. Some of it's, you know, can, can clearly be objective and justified. And at that point, you just need to listen up and either change what you're doing to, to uh, meet that criticism, or you're just going to have to, you know, grow a stiff, stiff spine and just take it like a man. 
so to speak. And and that I was going to come to that because you actually have a personal experience with this because you know you have a movie out mm -hmm. and so you have to own the the faults within that movie yeah. and sort of the kind good of better yourself the good the and the good bad. with the bad yeah, and yeah. and sometimes uh, whenever you're whenever you're making the film you can see or hear some of the faults with it and you 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 might get too close to the project and it's like with anything else anything that you that that is art and you create but then when you put it out there for other people to 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 either enjoy or make fun of or or what have you it's at that point when they will point out all of, all of your your shortcomings um at least at least the per, the perceived shortcomings and I, I think that's that's what we're talking about though is criticism versus making fun of something right sure. so and for you, you know, just like we talk about, so when I make my crappy music, which is usually, you know, pretty crappy and you already realize that, but usually you give me, you know, some sort of feedback and that's, you know, you can, you can, you can probably call it criticism, but it's not harsh. You know, it's, it's more of what you feel that the music is saying to you. And then you kind of mention that, okay, this is not really working for you, but then you always, you never say that it's not working in general. You always make sure to say that it's not working for me. Yeah. And actually, I do like that kind of criticism, but, and that, that would be, I guess, what, subjective, right? That's Completely, English, yeah. English, not that good. Subjective, objective, I don't subjective. know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he was talking to me, by the way. Um, yeah, no, when I, when I criticize um, anything, I'm, I'm definitely trying to come from a singular point of view, because I don't believe in any objective... I mean, I guess like what we discussed earlier, like if there's a boom mic in the screen, I guess that's objectively not a good thing. It might thing. be, might be art. I mean, he wanted you to know that you're watching uh, well, there's, something. I'm just there's, kidding. Well, there's I'm, comedic, I'm, that's objectively bad. But there's comedic <laughs> movies that do it in a certain. That's true. You know, but, but, uh, like but then, airplane, but then, Naked Gun, yeah, you know, all of the all the uh, scream spoofs that they did. But know. yeah, if I I try to go into art uh, completely, just like what I, with what I understand in my mind and how I under process things and understand things and how I gain things. Cause one of the things that I translate within myself is what I feel. And if I felt something I could better describe, okay, this is what I felt and I'm trying to understand why I felt this thing. And here's what I'm trying to explain. Now, if I listen to something and I'm not feeling anything, I'm trying to explain why I'm not feeling something. Cause I, I'm, I can't control my feelings. I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't really understand this. And I, I explain it within my point of view and I'm not going to, you know, demand that my point of view is the objective of everything, everyone else. Cause I know that other people like things that I don't like and vice versa. So I just, that's how I always try to approach criticizing art is like with my understanding, this is what I see about this. And, and it's also kind of coming to the point that we are living in a very, you know, what's the word, uh, technologically connected times where, you know, criticism actually reaches the corners of the world quite quickly. For example, I think they had to take all the criticism and the negative reviews for Hellboy, which the movie I saw today, out off the Internet. So they can actually make some money because, you know, people won't go to the theaters. And the theater was almost empty. There's only five people in there. Are you serious? Yeah, in it was the, opening weekend. Wasn't opening it? weekend, <laughs> and it was five people in there. And then that—that's that that's what I'm saying. You know, it's, but but then, let's say for pop artists or you know because that's art as well. So we're talking, we're talking in general art. You know, not just movies, but you know, pop artists who are making millions of dollars. And subjectively, I don't like most of the pop music nowadays. But then do do they have to worry about that criticism at that at some point you're so so what's the word shielded from their criticism that you know even if people are talking they all it doesn't really matter you know to them maybe it matters to people like neil breen who are actually coming is it i don't think it matters to <laughs> him. i mean because he kept keeps making like shitty movies yeah i look at it this way you look at any anything that's on you know amazon say <clears throat> and look at the look at the reviews for it there will always be somebody who doesn't rate something at a five. And that's just the way it is. I mean, not everybody's going to, 
you know, even something that you would think is universally liked, somebody's not going to like it. And they're going to have their reasons for it. And you may not agree with them. It's just they don't like it. The box was damaged. I hate those reviews, by the way. <laughs> no, nothing about the product. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, those are the worst. But, but I still come back to, is it in good taste? Is your criticism in good taste? Is it in good fun? Are you trying to help them? Or, you know, or are you just making fun of it? And, and at that point, then you have to ask that question. Well, wait a minute now. If somebody's really worked hard to do this and they've, they've poured their, their heart and soul into it and, and you're just tearing them down because maybe it is awful, but it, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a good way to, to do it at that point. You know, they, you've got constructive criticism when you try to give somebody pointers to, to make a better product or a better painting or whatever it is. But then there's just slamming on them like, <laughs> that looks like he's got, you know, a duck head on it and it's supposed to be a horse. No. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, that's... But, but then I can say that, you know, I spent a lot of time editing that uh, new Breen video of mine. So I've, I've poured some heart and soul in making fun of him. So <laughs> I think it's just, I'm just kidding. Well, I, but... ga <laughs> I gave you, I gave you my, uh, our, our honest feedback on that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was, I was going to say like, I think if you're genuinely in jest, that's okay. It's, uh, it's when people take the further step and this does happen a lot in art where they try to be like, mean, m like very mean to the person who created it. And they go out of their way to, out of their way to try to like defame him in a way, or like, just like, I, you know, just as an example, Lars von Trier, he's hated by a lot of people. And so they'll, you know, they'll dig deeper than just the movie and try to like criticize him as a person. It's like, and who's that? I'm just, I'm just and messing. it's going to be, but it's, it's just like, all right, now you're, now you're going overboard with this. Like just, you could, you don't have to like his movie, but criticize his movie. But now you're trying to like jab this person personally. And I think that's unnecessary. Yeah, I, th I think hopefully we haven't done any personal damage to New Breen. It's only his movie. Because I don't think we have actually said anything about the person himself. Yeah. I'm sure he's a very nice person. I don't... I, don't... I, like, the, I like the... I like the... Just the quiet... Just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't get the impression that you guys, like, hate him. I think you're... Honestly, you probably like him because he gives you that <laughs> comedic... I, I'll like... say it was an hour, 30 minutes of pure joy. Yeah, like, so you, you like him in a way of, like, he, he allowed me to enjoy this awful movie. <laughs> I'm laughing silently over here. Yeah. Shot. Oh, okay. you know, I, I tell you what, I'm intrigued by Neil. Yeah. I, I really am. I, I just, I, I'm not quite sure how his mind works, and I think that's, that's intriguing. Yeah, I guess that's one of the things. It's like, you know, I've, I've, I haven't seen the movie, but just seeing the clips from it, it's like it does bring the question, is like, is there something wrong with this guy? You yeah. know? And do we really want to be making, like, if he even pays attention to the criticism, like, is it right to make fun of someone who might have a problem? I mean, he might I, I not think, have a problem, think, but... Be, just because him talking or collecting money for his next movie like you know did a gofundme where he had a little video on his website he looked absolutely fine i mean he just looked like he's somebody who just wants to make movies mm -hmm. but then a neil breen movie is very different from somebody on youtube i think it was your movie sucks uh, that guy yms uh, he was saying that i want i want everybody to give your money to him i want a uh, uh, Avengers level budget Neil Breen movie. I want him to just make a movie with that budget. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it would still be. So he was supporting him in the end. You know, you can see mine right now on Amazon Prime for free. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, <laughs> Sean, uh, Sean, let's uh, while we while we're on that subject, just give a brief of how that movie came about and what the movie is about, and you know, the viewers might be able to go check it out on Amazon Prime. It Lives Inside was uh, written and directed primarily by a friend of mine. And the movie is, it, it's, a, it's about a, um, it, it takes some of the, uh, the Native American uh, mythos around a, a it's a, kind of like a, a demon spirit and it possesses people and it usually possesses people who have some form of weakness, you know, drug dependency, something in their past that makes, I guess, their soul particularly 
uh, amenable to what about this, scoliosis to this thing i don't know okay I don't I, know. i'm safe yeah probably and so the movie the movie is is about what happens to a family uh, that the the father of this family gets possessed by this thing and as the possession progresses through time uh the guy's his his whole demeanor his character changes and he doesn't know he's being possessed and the viewer can see what's going on and at first you really don't know if is this all in this guy's mind or is it or is it real and of course as you get towards the end of the movie you find out that yeah it was real and he he really was possessed so we shot the whole film in this really small house in uh, bethany oklahoma and it was yeah you know, i guess we had a handful of people um helping us uh, the whole time but it was really just me me and, and and that friend of mine and uh and my daughter when when she was in town so it was a very very small cast and crew um, it was our first time making a film, so we made plenty of mistakes. So when, when, when you see the reviews for It Lives Inside, the movie, keep in mind that I deserved everything that they said. And, and there, there, it co- there it goes, criticism. Yeah. As soon as you put anything out there. Absolutely. This podcast is being criticized. Because people are, people are spending their money to see this thing, and you know if they don't like it, they're going to tell you. You know what my the most positive criticism for me was? Stop sniffling after you say a statement. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? It just it just sounds weird. It, it's <laughs> <laughs> so again, I think we go back to the topic. Is it making fun of 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 the 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 people or the movie that goes too far, or is it the criticism? I think the criticisms are just. Um, and again, some sometimes it can be very very uh subjective and other times it can be objective but making fun of something is 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 a different story right because now you're purposefully trying to you know get either a rise out of people or make somebody laugh at it so i don't know i think there's a point you can go too far maybe um but then again you know there's a lot of there's a lot of that in comedy right a lot of stand-up comedy is poking fun at people and things and you know, we try to become more politically correct, if, if that's the right term nowadays. But I mean, look at PC. George Carlin. Yeah. I mean, I Man. loved, I loved his rants. I thought they were, they were gold. But Ricky I'm, Gervais says the same thing. Yeah. If you ever seen Ricky Gervais, he's always. And just, it offends a lot of people. But yeah, you know but, what? If it offends you, don't listen to it. Exactly. Yeah. But but, but then I, I I think in this day and age that does not flow. I mean, that does not go that far. No, it's. It's free speech, but it's not free speech. It is. I mean, everything's, it, it, it's very, very cyclic and it's like a pendulum, right? We swing one way, way too far of everything being so politically correct. If you, if you don't use an all-inclusive pronoun, if I say, you know, you're going to hang with the big boys instead of saying hang with the big people, you know, and then people get offended, but not everybody. Some, sometimes you can take that kind of thing too far. Other people say, no, it's not far enough because there's too much gender bias and that sort of thing. M- maybe so, maybe so. But I think there's so many more things in, in the world right now to, you know, to be upset by. Um, trying to be politically correct about everything that you do is not one of them. But I get it. I mean, people are trying to push, uh, <clears throat> you know, equal rights and, and all that in the, into the mainstream and having it be the mainstream instead of y- you don't even have to think about it anymore. So... You know, back to the criticism piece. I, I think I think it's perfectly okay to criticize stuff. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Okay. So so back back to the film. Yes. All right. So we 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 were critiquing Neil's film. Right. We we watched yes. it. We were we were poking fun at it, and you know some of the other commentators on YouTube were doing some of the similar things that we did and they were poking fun at some of the acting and, and so on and so forth. And I just wanted to put one thing out there that on most of the time when people say, Oh, that actor was terrible. It was awful. Well, I think there's two things that go into that one. They might've been a horrible choice for the role. And two, a lot of that falls straight in the director's lap. If you don't get good direction from the director, you don't know how to act that role out, right? Speaking with personal I, absolutely. experience, yeah. So some of, the, some of the critique of the movie that we made 
was about some of the acting. And that's, I, I'm laying that blame right on us as directors, co-directors, because that was, that was not their fault. They didn't get the direction that they needed, partly because I was so tied up running the camera and a friend of mine was tied up, you know, pushing the dolly that we were not directing, right? That's why you typically have a director that just directs and you have a camera operator and a sound engineer and so forth and, and grips. So that's our fault. So when you look at a film like Neil's and you can't necessarily say this is the actor's fault. So some of that's on Neil. Some of it could have been that he got somebody, his next door neighbor down the street to act for him and he, they just didn't have any acting experience. And so that's bad acting, right? So I, I don't know how much of that was bad acting versus no direction or bad direction. True. But, but then you have to also worry about the budget of the films because you couldn't get more people for your film because you're a low budget movie. Right. So then, you know, it, yeah, you can blame yourself, but there's also the, the matter of fact that, you know, you didn't have many people actually helping you out with the cinema, you know, with the camera. That's true. This that. It is, it is true. But, but then but a little bit more care should have been given towards the actor. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And you have to expect the kind of critique that comes with that, which is it's absolutely our fault. Mm -hmm. So when someone says that that's, that was bad acting or, or the, the audio was terrible, you're right. It was, you know, that was, that's on us. There's yeah. nothing that, you know, we should have done something differently. Yeah. And when you put that out there again, that's where you need to expect somebody to come back and point that out and go, I just paid, you know, five bucks or whatever it is to see this. And it was a waste of my money because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Yeah. I think in the case of, of Neil's film, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it so much because it was so, some, some of the things in there I thought were so ridiculous. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Right. <laughs> that basically I, the entire movie. Yeah. And so now I want to go buy all of his movies because yeah. I, they're funny as hell to me. Yeah. Now, whether he purposefully tried to be funny or whether he's just accidentally funny because he's just a new filmmaker and doesn't know what he's doing, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd like to think that after the first film, he kind of knew that some of these shticks that he was doing were kind of goofy, but he did them anyway. But I don't know. I mean, maybe he's just not aware. Maybe he's not self-aware of it. I, I think maybe he thinks that everybody else is stupid for not liking his movie, and he maybe he loves his movies. So maybe. You know, I, I think maybe. this is the best. This is a piece of art. Like This should be selected for Cannes Film Festival there's or something a, like that. There's, a, it, there's a, almost an innocence about his film. That's true. It's, it's this purity that he has in which he does things, and I think he does not realize you know, how when people see that, they go, I cannot believe you did that because you just don't do that, Neil. And one of the filmmakers, Anurag Kashyap from India, who I adore and revere as a filmmaker, he had a very nice conversation, like a little interview, a very simple interview with this guy just sitting in the in the field, you know, no music, nothing, just them chatting. And he mentioned something that really stuck with me. He's like, Every uh, more than courage to do something, you need innocence. He said that because you don't, because you don't know yet that whatever you're doing is is going to be, you know, that bad. Because mm -hmm. and as soon as you do that with innocence, like he was talking about his movie Black Friday, which is on the uh, the, the Bombay blast in India in '93. So he did did it with innocence, not knowing that the government is going to shut that movie down because it was too realistic. So he said that, you know, more than courage and hard work, sometimes innocence is what makes you make a movie that, you know, that might be your more seminal work or, you know, that, and th that's, that's the thing. Cause Neil yeah. might be very innocent in which he's doing everything, not realizing that, you know, you people, don't know what you don't exactly. know until you yeah. do it. And <clears throat> you can, you can try to, you know, perfect your craft and not do anything until you think you're perfect. That means you'll never do anything. I mean, that's the whole point, I guess, of film schools and making, you know, Absolutely. making short films. Cause, so you get used to doing it. You, you get used to working with a certain crew. But <clears throat> I'll tell you, if, if you wait until you think that you're going to be perfect, you'll never do anything. You never will. And sure. yeah, sure. You're going to put it out there. It's like we were just, you know, practicing just before you got here, uh, Christian. And we were playing some songs and I was out of tune and, you know, the guitar strings were buzzing. The guitar and strings were buzzing. My, my fingers and, and, were but, hurting. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. I mean, yeah. it's not a it's not a complete polished thing. And 
if, if we were to put that out there for anybody to hear, that's exactly what you would expect to hear. It's not going to be a perfect thing. I mean, it's just not. That takes years and years of, of, of work to yeah. make it like that. But you also wouldn't go pay, you know, 10 bucks for an album of that from no. someone, would you? No. <laughs> so, I mean, Christian, Christian would. So, I mean, but, it, but it's like that with the film too, right? So why would you expect somebody to buy it and watch it if it's not up to par? That's true. I did. It's so, oh boy. If you do and, and, you, and you don't like it, well, you're, it's fair game to criticize it at that point. You paid money for it. Absolutely. So anyways, I'm off my soapbox. Yeah. That's how I feel about that. All right. So now for the section that we call, what the crap did I just hear? Uh, Micronation, uh, which, which was the most incredible thing I ever heard. So it's called... <laughs> It's called the Principality of Sealand. It's a micronation that claims rough towers, an offshore platform in the North Sea, approximately 12 kilometers off of the coast of Suff Suffolk, Suffolk, Suffolk. I've, I can never say that. Uh, people are called Sealanders or Sealandic people. <laughs> How many people are on this? Dude? Uh, I'll come to it. Uh, the, there's a prince called Michael Bates. It was declared... An actual micronation in on 2nd September 1967. <laughs> the total area claimed, and I'm reading, uh, if anybody wants to read more about it, it's, it's on the Wikipedia, just Google Principality of Sealand. And um, total space is 0. 0.004 kilometers squared. You, you ready for this? They have a currency of their own called Sealand Coins. <laughs> <laughs> it is pegged to the US dollars. And the time, time zone is... GMT. If you go on the website, you can actually buy a Sealand passport with your name on it and your face on it. But my favorite part is they actually have sports. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. So first of all, let's just say Sealand is not recognized by any major international sporting body. So that that's a sad moment. Let's just so we won't be then. seeing any Sealanders. No, no, Olympics. no Sealand soccer teams, no Sealand football teams. You know, uh, actually, it has probably like ten citizens, or something like something close to that. It's all one family. Isn't it's it? all one family, yeah. and it, it it's literally is an oil platform. That's what the Sealand is. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I said they have sports, so. See, actually, hoisting the fishing nets up. exactly <laughs> just running up and down the the, the oil rig yeah. there, there's uh they actually have various sports that sealanders take part in like curling mini golf uh, football fencing there's a sealand national football association they have their national team and it's not recognized by fifa <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they have do they have a talent scout i, I think they actually might um they actually, uh, the first official athlete was Darren Blackburn of Oakville, Ontario, Canada, who was appointed in 2003. 2018, competitive swimmer Richard Royal became the first person to swim the 12 kilometers from Sealand to the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> the first and only. Finishing in three hours, 29 minutes. He was probably the only one. <laughs> and, uh, oh, there's a... The swim was subject to a short documentary film entitled Escape from Sealand. <laughs> <laughs> there's our history. There's uh, You can actually a, become a lord or lady of Sealand. You only have to pay a certain amount of money to do that. You can actually be the... Yep, so you can get a lord, lady, baron or baroness. You pay forty nine ninety nine for that. You can become a count or countess. You buy. You have to pay a little bit more, two hundred ninety-four dollars. <laughs> you can become a duke or duchess for uh, seven thirty-four dollars. Sounds like a steal. You can own a piece of Sealand territory. Of what part of the point zero zero four kilometers are you going to own? The toilets? <laughs> a conch shell. I don't know. <laughs> you can personal get a personalized coat of arms. You can get personalized email address from sealand <laughs> it's only seven dollars 59 cents per six months so i have to ask is kevin costner an honor honorary citizen of sealand 
After Waterworld, I would think so. <laughs> I would think so too. <laughs> I think it's probably one of the 27 citizens of Sealand. Yeah. But my favorite of all of this is not the desk, the desk um, flags or the normal flags or Dutch's the Baroness or whatever that is. It's in 1978. You think that a little little country, a micronation like that, with like an oil platform as their full nation wouldn't be uh, subjected to violence, but hey, here we go. Here we go. In 1978, a guy named Alexander Achenbach described himself as the prime minister of Sealand, hired Dutch and German mercenaries to form an attack on Sealand. While, uh, while, while the Sealand, uh, while Bates and his wife, who were then the, uh, I suppose, the, uh, the prince or princess? I have no idea. <clears throat> It's up there, but I'm not going to scroll up there to read it. But So they, they were out in England, and so this guy hired mercenaries to attack them. Um, they stormed the platform <laughs> with speedboats, jet skis, and a helicopter. And took Bates' son, Michael, hostage. <laughs> I don't know what their demands were. I want that oil rig. <laughs> Give me that. We want your desk flags now. <laughs> I want to be a duchess. Have you checked our website? You can become one for seven forty nine ninety nine. dollars Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> Michael was able... This is it's not done yet. Michael was able to retake Sealand and capture Achenbach and the mercenaries using weapons stashed on the platform. <laughs> oh. No, you give me your guns. How incompetent... Were the mercenaries? Yeah, how many of them were there? I, I don't know. It's just because they said speed boats, plural, jet skis, plural, and helicopters. So there's more. And then Michael, like John Wick. I, this is coming straight out of Waterworld. I mean, I, I'm, I'm picturing a scene in Waterworld right now. It's like, you know, you think I'm back? Yes, I'm back. Like, you know, what, what is that? Uh, uh, Keanu Reeves is on sea land, just kicking ass. <laughs> I can't believe he was able to take down all those mercenaries and reclaim Sealand. Im- imagine how badass he is. <laughs> Sounds staged. He's he's their only yeah. <laughs> he's their only veteran. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> what, what what war did you? 1978. 1978. Sealand. <laughs> Do you think they have a play of that already? <laughs> You know what? We ought to make a movie about that. <laughs> All right. So coming to the theaters or YouTube's near you, uh, the uh, the attack on Sealand. Yes. <laughs> Their mercenary is coming. Wow. Ah, uh, we need to uh, get those guns. Now. Now. <laughs> I see helicopters. <laughs> That's gonna be the entire movie, just monotone acting. <laughs> Pew, pew, pew. Oh my God, they're shooting at us. <laughs> so that's, that's Principality of Sealand, a very happening place. Thank you for listening to White Spectrum. Goodbye and alvida. <laughs>